Got the install done. And they are bright. Right now, this would be your low beam. When I switch to high beam, you can see they get brighter. I have them set up on my turn signals, so when I go left turn, they actually are flashing with the left turn and the right turn, they flash with the right turn. I just think that's a great idea because I've definitely been there before where it's like, you got your turn signal on, you're making the turn and the car didn't realize you were turning or didn't even see you. So I like that feature a lot. Out here in California, I do a ton of lane splitting. I mean, that's a big reason why I ride every day to work. And so now when I hit the flashers, I'm cruising down flashing. The, uh, the flash to pass is pretty cool. So if I double tap the, uh, you know, if you pull in a high beam and I double tap it, it'll strobe. <laughs> that, that is awesome, huh? Coming up on somebody, just give them one of these real quick and boom, it turns into strobing. It also does that when I hit the horn. So as I lay on the horn, it just goes crazy. The other way you control these is over here. So if I hold in the turn signal cancel button for about three seconds, they go off. So I can turn them on or off. Um, they're independent from the BMW auxiliary lights. You can see I'm turning those on. Being this is a GSA, it comes factory. So I'll turn them on by holding in the turn signal cancel. And then from here, because these are set up on auxiliary one in the uh, Easy Hex Can, I hold my wonder wheel over here on the left. I hold it to the left. I hold it to the left. And it gives me a strobe. I can now take my wonder wheel and lower the intensity. I can turn them off. That's low, as low as it goes, and then I can bring them all the way up to 100%. That's all the way up. Boy, I got a lot of cool crap sitting in front of me. Let's take a closer look at it. So this bracket here is gonna be for the BMW R1200, R1250. The uh, bracket is very simple. I haven't put it on yet but I did read the instructions and it looks extremely straightforward. You get this bracket, a sleeve, a bolt, and this really fancy nut that will drop into the subframe and then you just tighten it and you're done. This thing will probably be on the bike in less than five minutes. So that's my plan on how to mount these. You can mount this uh, backwards so it faces like that or you can mount them forwards, right? So the arms will face forward, whatever the case is. It seems like the preferred method is towards the back, towards the engine. I'm gonna go for that. And the lights will be underneath, just like so. So this is the mounting bracket. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Next up, we've got these lenses. These lenses are a accessory as well, these little covers rubber, very soft rubber boot. I had uh, slipped this one on already. Slips right on, seems very secure. I would assume as you're driving, riding, uh, the wind will be holding it on no problem. So big reason why I got these lights is because of the removable yellow covers. The other pretty neat thing Ruby did with these lens covers is they also ship a clear. So let's say yellow is not for you or you wanna be able to swap it back to white, back to yellow, and you wanna give it an extra protection. This is the light without the lens cover cap at all. And what you simply do is you just uh, push out the yellow lens here and then you pop in the clears that they provide with these lens caps. Now for the lights. The main event. These are the R7s. Currently, uh, their biggest ones they sell for auxiliary lights. It came with a very cool box. Don't tell my wife, but I might be keeping this looking uh, box. <laughs> I, have, I have a bit of a box problem. These are three wire lights. So you can see there's three pins in there. 
It also comes with a pigtail, three pins. This connects, nice waterproof connection. And then it has your three wires. Green being is your dimmable. You don't have to use this. You could just put this on on off switch and then you would just use your black and white here. I do plan to use the green dimmable here. This is what the light looks like with the bracket on. I since assembled this and put it together, very clean. It comes with this stainless steel piece of hardware, threads in the top, and that's how you would secure it, whether to your bracket you might have purchased or however else you're gonna be mounting these on your bike. The instructions didn't go into much detail, but after I sat and fiddled with these a little bit, I just took a look at the cutaway here in the light itself, and I noticed the black washers they provided, they fit perfectly in there. So what I'm going with is I'm dropping a washer on each side, and then sliding the bracket on top. From there, I'll be dropping in some hardware, Torx head, and then you can see the machine for this fits perfectly with the Torx head, no washer needed there on the outside. Now one thing I thought was really nice and neat is you got a whole bag of extra washers and extra bolts. And matter of fact, these bolts are Allen. So maybe your bike is more Allen uh, opposed to Torx. My bike has more Torx, so I'm going with Torx. But they've got Allens or extras in case you lose them. You can see here a plethora of stickers, which is way cool. I'll have to choose which one is gonna go on the bike and then water bottles and kids and all sorts of cool stuff there. Get a bag of hardware, zip ties, heat shrink. There is, uh, what they provided is a soldered heat shrink joint splice. I don't know what the technical term is. I've used these before, they're quite nice. And the idea of that is, is you strip your wire, you interlock your wire together. This being is already slipped on. They threw in extras. You give it some heat with a heat gun or maybe even a lighter. The piece of solder will melt down. The heat shrink tube will tighten up and we'll take a closer look at that. The other thing I'm doing on the bike is I'm gonna be installing this Hex Easy Can. I've seen a lot about this on the internet and I'm very impressed of all the functions and features you can do with these. And they are programmable with a computer, with a simple USB cable. Get a whole bunch of different miscellaneous connections, zip ties, even extra pins. I started building mine out. There's many ways to do this, but ultimately everyone's gonna connect it to the battery, positive, negative. Then you're gonna connect it to the bike. This is your connection to the bike. So you unplug the module harness, then you will plug that in to one of these and then plug the other one into the harness. So essentially what you're doing is you're putting this in line with that factory module. That is how you get into the bike scan system. From there, you're just left with four auxiliary plugs. The setup that I plan to go with is I'm going to use two separate plugs for each individual light. So this will be the left light, this will be the right light or whatever. I'm using a three pin setup because I do plan to dim with this module and the wonder wheel. So I inserted the three pin wire onto this plug and I connect it to just so. We can probably disconnect that real quick for a demo. Pretty straightforward. The amperage that this is rated was borderline for one connector for both lights. So I wanted the ability to run both the lights you know, all the way as bright as possible. And I didn't want to have to worry about this module. So that's why I decided to split these up. Way I'm going to mount this is with it slanted to the back to the engine. And when you have it mounted that way, you can read the Ruby here on the sides. So that's going to go up in there. I kind of already stuck it up and was messing with it a bit. I can tell it's going to fit, but first I got to drop this down into its location. So let the cursing begin. No, I'm kidding. I'm sure it's not that hard. <laughs> and you're gonna lift up, up this trim right here. That's gonna buy you some space, boom. And it dropped in. If I zoom out, you'll see right where that is. 
So one thing to note is the manual, the instructions do call out that if your bike has this plastic piece, you might want to just trim that off. Uh, I was actually able to work around it and just slip the socket up and in, finagle a little bit, but. All right, probably the most uh, rewarding part of the install is hanging the lights. The worst is probably running the cabling. Let's see what these bad boys look like. Oh yeah. Just got to tighten them and adjust them and try to do this cleanly. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to splice this and extend this cable. I was hoping this was going to be long enough, but it's not. So I got some of this cable off of Amazon, very similar. And uh, I'll put a link down below for this cable I'm using for extension, or you can buy it from, I saw Ruby sells it, or even uh, the Easy Hexcan people have extensions as well. I will be using this heat shrink tubing, which is something I had. Ruby sent this one. I'm going to use this one where I splice it to the Easy Hex Can. So I have to make two splices. So first I'll start off by slipping it on here because if you don't put that on first, you're screwed. If you don't offset these connectors, what will happen is it'll be this huge chunk. It'll be this huge chunk you're going to have to deal with. So that's my offset cut right there. Like that. And where that's all twisted up, you want to put your little solder piece right there. And that's what it looks like when it's done. You can see the solder is in there melted. So there is my final product. We'll slide this on down. I've seen people use a lighter, but I definitely prefer a heat gun. These are the connectors. So the connector is there and the connector is over here. So if I ever need to remove these for whatever reason, um, maintenance, I broke them, whatever the case might be, I have the connectors right here. I did that on purpose so I can get to them. I ran the cabling right there. Cabling comes up kind of out of the little beak area there. Those are the two cables staying tight against the frame there, coming down around, looking out for that anchor for the side plate that goes there, cruising up and around and then pops out there, pops out there. Zip tie here to the harness. And then from there it got really easy. It just got, it just went right down in this little tray trough. And there's lots of room up underneath here. And that is the cables right here. So I'm just finishing my testing. And I haven't put the last piece of uh, heat shrink tubing. But you can see there are the splices. And the easy hex, simply you disconnect this. This is the, what is it, the RDC. This is for the tire pressure sensors, this little module. So you unplug the factory harness. Unplug the factory harness, which is right here. And then you plug it into the easy hex can. And the easy hex can has a connection. And that then plugs into your module. And that's how it starts talking to the body control system.